Welcome everybody to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Colin McEwen. In this week's show, it's the end of November. I'm here in Ohio. It's cold, I mean really cold. But the fishing is red hot. It's steelhead time. I love this time of year. I'm here with one of the gurus of fly fishing for steelhead, Jeff Blood. And he's teaching me about emerald shiners and how white zonkers imitate these emerald shiners and they work so well for steelhead. We're gonna talk about presentation techniques, we're gonna talk about rigging options, about everything about this. It's gonna be a very technical show. I know you're gonna love it. Stay with us. Ooh, that's a nice sized fish. I will catch these all day. That is what you're in for on this episode. Migratory rainbow trout, called steelhead, are highly prized trophies. They're beautiful and become leaping titans when hooked. For many anglers, Great Lake steelhead are the ultimate challenge. The term steelhead describes a rainbow trout that was born in a stream, migrated to the sea, and returned to the stream as an adult to spawn. Such fish are said to be andronomous. Thanks to their introduction to the Great Lakes dating back to the 1870s, steelhead have successfully adapted to a freshwater environment and they migrate up rivers and streams to both feed and spawn. When residing in Lake Erie, they mainly feed on emerald shiners. And fortunately for fishermen, these shiners are also found in the rivers. The, the way this pattern works relative to steelhead that's different to Atlantic salmon, the steelhead are on the feed the whole time that they're in the system. Um, there is a migration of these emerald shiners that do come up the creeks. Now I fish it in a dead drift uh, and I swing it down. Most of the fish I catch in the dead drift, <clears throat> but as it swings up, I'll also catch a few fish there. So I fish it on the bottom of my rig. The first fly that I have is my egg fly, and then the bottom fly is the white zonker. The silhouette is real important of the fly. The color is real important to the fly. Um, most of the emerald shiners have a very distinct black eye when you look at them. When they die, there's a process called autolysis. And autolysis is nothing more than the body's own enzymes breaking the, the body down. And when that occurs, it forms uh, gas and <clears throat> bloats the fish. That's why many fish, when you see them dead in the water, they turn white. And if they're down in the water column on the bottom of the stream, they simply bloat a little bit and float up off the bottom and drift down with the current. And the fish is waiting there, eagerly devouring whatever comes by them. The cast I'm gonna make is uh, an overhand cast and I'm right now letting the uh, line down on the water because I have a nice gradual flow to the water and uh, the fly's drifting through naturally. As I go, I may then pull up to the indicator and I'll show that technique here in a minute. And we're gonna hope to hook a fish right about in this water, right where I'm drifting right now is kind of an optimum spot. And I think we got a pretty good fish on here. Now, while I'm doing this, I want to explain how you, how you should fight a fish. If you notice, I keep my rod straight up in the air and let the rod flex down to the fish. That reduces the amount of stress that's on my tippet. And we, uh, a lot of guys will break their fish off because they point the rod down. And when they point the rod down, puts all the pressure on the tippet, it's physics, and it breaks the fish. And as long as I stay up in the air like this, I'm gonna be able to fight the fish and tire them out. I fish off from the reel, the line off from the reel, uh, as often as I can, and let my drag do the work on the fish. And this is a nice, looks like a hen. Took the egg pattern. Looks fairly fresh and chrome. Are we gonna net this for you, uh, Jeff? Sure, why don't we net this fish, Colin? So what I'm gonna do for Colin here is just to try to get the head of the fish to the surface. 
There he comes. Okay. There you go. And there's just a nice, nice Lake Erie steelhead. Now, yeah. if you notice, there's the white zonker. It's just a tremendous pattern. Catches a lot of fish. There you go. Beautiful steelhead. Right there by a great fishing net. And let's put him in the water. Fish is still healthy and swims off. And a great fishing experience. Nice job. Today, Jeff Blood is guiding me on rivers in the Ohio and Pennsylvania area. These rivers are known for big runs of steelhead coming from Lake Erie. So Colin, you know, I'm on my, my home stream here, so I have home court advantage. And what I'd like to do is show you a couple things that I do here to help us catch fish. The first thing is we're in fairly fast water that's deep. We're adding more split shots. So we added another big shot on it. And what I try to do in this faster water is to high stick. What that means is you're gonna throw your line out fairly close to you and lift your rod tip so the line is straight down into the water and it's just bouncing. Now you don't pull it, you let the current take it, but you feel it bounce. And when it does something that just doesn't seem natural, you need to really pop it. I wanna point out that you've put the uh, split shot fairly close to the first fly. That's nine inches right there. Okay, so nine inches. Right. And then approximately two and a half feet away, I have the, uh, the last fly. The white zonker. And yeah. these fish that are in this water appear to want the white zonker. They're, they're a little more chrome in this water. Mm -hmm. And let's see what we can catch here. Okay. Okay, bring that out. There you go. Ha! See? Yeah, and it See? did exactly what you said. It just paused. Ooh, we'll get that rod up in the air now there, buddy. There you go. Look at him go. Good, good drag on that reel. Right into the sun. Got another fly in his mouth. My, it's my fly. I lost him a few minutes ago. Oh, did you? Yeah, keep your rod up. Yeah. Nice fish. Nice fish. Keep him coming at me. Yeah. All right. Actually, he's got a he's got a black fly in his mouth. Somebody else broke him off. Yeah, he's been broken off a handful of times. Okay. There's the one fly. From somebody else. And there's my fly. Just hooked him lightly in the corner. Let's get that out here. Just give me a second there, my friend. I'm gonna make your day get a lot better. Just go in here and just pop right out like that. Put it out. Okay. Nice crumb fish there. Let him go, like from here. Look at that. Here he goes. Thanks for your assistance there. Yeah. Help me to figure that out. I'll give you your net happy back. To, happy to show you what I know, Colin. And look at that fly. That's somebody else's fly. See so you can get the clip. Some of the novice fishermen I encounter on the river wonder why I'm catching so many fish and they come up and say to me, I'm doing exactly the same thing you are. But in reality, they're not. And it's the little tiny things that really count in steelhead fishing. And an example is that when you cast out, there's a couple ways that you can make the cast. And you can leave your line down on the water, okay? And there's a time to do that. Or you can lift your line up off the water just to the indicator. Or you can actually cast it out and hold the indicator off the water and do a high stick method that you'll read about in many of the books. And there's a time to deploy each and every one of those. Sometimes simply just to present the fly differently, but sometimes also to make sure you're not snagging the bottom or losing the flies or making the best presentation. So in the case of this particular water here, it's quite fast. I more than likely would cast the fly out and lift my arm up with the rod all the way up so that when I'm following it down, now I'm not moving my fly or the indicator, 
but I've developed a touch where I can lift the fly line to the indicator without moving my leader. And that's critically important. And uh, in, in the case of this particular application, uh, the slightest little detection on that indicator is when you strike it. Now, if you want to go ahead and fish the traditional uh, laying the fly line on the water, as I might in a longer distance cast, um, I'd put it out there. And then you got to start mending your line. Mending means controlling the line so you're not creating an unnatural drift. So you sometimes have to flip it upstream. And in the case right here, I have to flip it there and slow it down here because I got two different speeds of water and let it come down through the, through the water uh, in the current. And again, if the indicator moves in an unnatural way, stops, twitches, or actually gets jerked under, you need to strike it. Go ahead and make that same cast and get ready. Right about there. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> you called it. It's just, that's a, got some shoulders on it right there. Yeah, it took the zonker. Took the zonker. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, let's just beach it. Just pull them to the side. Bring them right on the beach. Okay. Keep going. Walk right back. And lift up now. Lift up. There you go. Walk them right up. Walk them right up. Yep. Oh, sorry about that. Fish. If you let me do this, I'll get it out of you. Beautiful. Okay, let's do it again. There'll be a bunch of them. Whoopsie. I think one of the things, I just missed a fish. <laughs> and it's the focus. With the snimping, you've got to be totally focused. And as you said, you miss so many fish where, hey, that was a fish. And you're yelling at me, and I, I should be setting. But, I, but you know what it is? It, it's, it's like sometimes you play other sports like that, where you just get that hesitation where you're, was that what I thought it was? Right. But it's already gone, right? It's already so, gone. When in doubt, just give it a little. When, flip. when your chance to put the puck in the nut was there, you let it go by. Yeah. You know? It's quick and it's fast. And, and it is fast. It's just as fast as hockey. There you go. Right there. Good. Now lift. There you go. Hit that. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Coming all over. You're calling that one, Jeff. So I think this is real important. It's how hard it is, we hear the train behind us here, how important it is to detect those hits. And I don't miss them. I mean, you're helping me. Guy, me guys, guys, guys are getting hits a lot, and they're not striking on the fish. And you learn to read it and understand what's going on, they'll catch a lot more fish. <laughs> Maybe not. You gotta love it, don't you? <laughs> you know what, Colin? I remember my first fish, and I've never lost that experience. I mean, every time I catch a fish, I just love it. Took the zonker. <laughs> nice fat fish. Look at the belly on her. Okay, I'm showing the camera. Yeah. Look at that. I'll get the belly on that fish. Look how fat that fish is. Is that incredible? Look at that. Took the zonker. All right. Uh, let's do that again. Let's do that again. <laughs> wow. The equipment used on this trip was 10-foot, seven-weight rods with matching reels. 
it's especially important to have a good quality smooth drag system as steelhead are extremely strong and will test your equipment and your tippets to the max. The fly line we used was a weight forward matched to the reel. As we were indicator fishing and the water's not that deep, we had no need for any sinking lines. This pattern works extremely well for a couple of reasons. One, it catches a lot of fish, and that's first and foremost. But two, it's simple and easy to tie, therefore you can tie a lot of them. Now there are some particular uh, unique things that need to occur when you tie this pattern. It's not like a traditional zonker that you buy in most fly bins. The rabbit fur needs to be a little thicker than the, the distance of a nickel or the, the uh, thickness of a nickel. It's tied on size eight or size 10, two uh, X long shanked hooks. The uh, rabbit fur then, I like it more sparse than thick. Um, and it's about an inch and a half to two inches long max. And if you tie it any bigger, um, you'll catch fish with it, but your rate of, of hookups will go down substantially. So you need to pay attention to the specific formula for tying this pattern for Great Lakes Steelhead. Along with white zonkers, other flies you want to take with you when steelheading are a variety of different colored yarn or egg flies, an assortment of woolly buggers, and stone flies such as the Kaufman stone have a variety of indicators and a good supply of split shot. It's important to have fresh supplies of tippet in different sizes. A good rule is the clearer the water, the lighter the tippet should be. Steelhead are notoriously tippet shy. Right there. That's fish. Did I call that or what? You called that. It's a big one too. Oh, that's big fish. Look at that tail. He's probably right at the head of that pool. It's a little cut here. Wow. So you're gonna go down below here and I'll try and bring him to him once he's ready to come in. Beautiful. Well, Jeff, I really appreciate you teaching me everything about zonkers, and I can see the egg pattern, so he took the zonker. I mean, this explains everything about why the bait fishermen here, conventional tackle guys, are using the minnows. It's the emerald shiners that they're looking for, and I saw some minnows in the, the, the shallows, so it's a great pattern, this white death. And as this fish is proving, there's some Oh, that's a big steelhead. Well, you know, like everybody, Colin, I try different patterns all the time, but I keep coming back to this because it just works. Yeah. And, uh, you know, you're always looking for that new secret, but this is this is the, the fly right here. That's a nice fish you have on there, Colin. Yeah, it looks, looks pretty solid. Yeah. Ah, oh, sweet. And try and get him to turn his head your way and bring him your way. Looks like a big male. Strong fish.
All right. <laughs> Look at that. Now that, that's a big steelhead. All right. He's filled in that. Outstanding, outstanding fish. Ah, sweet. I don't see his fly. There it is, right there in the mouth. Yep, right in the corner. Oh, look at that. That's sweet. Look at that big, thick male. And that water's cold. All right, let him go here. All right. Well, Jeff, thank you very much. You know, I hope you learned a lot about uh, fly fishing using white zonkers. I mean, the fishery here in this area is phenomenal. If you've never had a chance, come here. If you want to learn more about this show and others in our series, visit us on the web, www.thenewflyfisher.com. From everybody uh, at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Do you want to learn more about this crazy and exciting world of fly fishing? Watch the other videos in the series and subscribe to the channel. Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to the support of Orvis Sporting Traditions, Islander Precision Reels, Scientific Anglers, Rail Riders Outdoor Clothing, the toughest clothes on the planet, Net Staff, the world's first wading staff and net, to learn more about the new fly fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.